you guys what's up it's morgan and angie with the shift from people pleasing to empowered connection and today we are talking more about people pleasing with your romantic relationships so i have a question for you all do you bend over backwards to keep the peace with your partner do you go out of your way to try to avoid confrontation at all costs so often we see with relationships that there is so much going on underneath that never is talked about because this lack of direct communication when you have lack of direct communication it can cause so many issues in your marriage or with your partner so angie tell us a little bit about why is it that we bend over backwards to avoid confrontation yeah to avoid rocking the boat well, there, we can say it in one, well, actually two words. And the main reason is self-protection. We self-protect. And how does this look? And why do we, why do we self-protect? We self-protect because we fear their reaction. We don't want them to yell at us or be mean to us because we're trying to protect our vulnerable heart that is probably very sensitive. And we also fear the tension and the awkwardness that can come about from a conflict. We really believe that there's no healthy way to resolve conflict and that all conflict is bad. So we bring some beliefs to the table that make it even worse and just more tense and more awkward. And who wants tension and awkwardness? Um, we fear also that we don't have the right words, that we're going to stumble and we're, we're just going to mess it up. We, when we get in fear, we lose our words. We cannot think properly or clearly. And, and the last thing is that um, we make assumptions. Like, again, we're looking at why do we self-protect? Well, we make assumptions about what they may be thinking about us. And it's called projection projections. Mm -hmm. And it could be about a situation. We make all sorts of assumptions and projections onto that other person that they believe the way that we do. And a lot of times they don't. And even though it's your partner and you know them well, they're still, we do this all the time, you know, in, in our romantic partner relationships. So those are the four things, fearing their reaction. I'm looking at my list, fearing the tensionness and awkwardness, fearing that we don't, or we're going to lose our words or don't have the right words as if there could be right words <laughs> and um, making assumptions about what they think about a situation or about us projecting onto them. So there you go. Yeah. And all of this self-protection, you know, we just got to honor it because none of us want to deal with confrontation. It's not fun. It's uncomfortable. But when you can start to understand the benefits of direct communication, then you can start to see that the temporary discomfort that comes from confrontation can actually outweigh the cost of the of going through that conversation so the first benefit of direct communication with your partner is that it eases your burden if you're feeling like overwhelmed with things that are going on because maybe there's too much on your plate effectively communicating that and having a conversation about it can be uncomfortable at first because Maybe, you know, maybe you're doing all of the chores and you need some help with the laundry or something like that. Maybe your husband or spouse doesn't want to do that. But if you express your feelings in an honest way and say, listen, I don't have enough time and, the, and energy in the day to get these things done. Can you please help me? And, and letting them set parameters even on what they're willing to help with. That can, in the long run, help you because the truth is having these conversations is hard. That temporary discomfort is hard. But the prolonged discomfort you're experiencing in avoiding the confrontation is also hard. So it's just starting to realize that these benefits could really outweigh what you're currently doing. So one benefit could ease your burden. Another benefit of direct communication with your spouse is that you get your needs and wants met. And especially your needs and wants with connection, with connecting with your spouse. And the third thing that you can get as a benefit from more direct communication with your spouse or partner is harmony and compromise. 
when you work through a situation together, again, temporarily discomforting, but when you can both come to a solution that you're both happy about, it creates more connection, more authenticity, more honesty, and it, and it, it really can bring you closer together. So these are some great, great benefits of really having those conversations that can feel really difficult at the time. And keep that in mind when you're approaching these conversations like that, okay, conversation and confrontation is not always a bad thing. Like Angie said, we get it into our heads that it's always a bad thing and that's not necessarily the case. Now I have a funny example for you guys too about, uh, about direct communication. So I, uh, I heard the story from a friend of a friend and what it was is uh, uh, his wife had put a light bulb on their kitchen table. And, um, you know, he comes home, not, not thinking about it. Oh, there's a light bulb out, you know, on the table, who knows what, you know, what's going on with that. And, you know, two weeks later, she blows up about him, about how, like how you can't take a hint. And I, that light bulb has been sitting there for two weeks and I wanted you to replace the bulb in the kitchen or whatever. And he was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, where is this all coming from? Because she did not communicate directly with him that she wanted him to switch the light bulb out. He didn't know to take the hint. And so then she got mad at him. And how often do we do that in our relationships? We expect our spouse to read our minds and then we get pissed off at them when they don't read our minds correctly. <laughs> so just becoming aware of this pattern is such a powerful thing. Giving yourself permission to just start to try to improve on these, these patterns and habits can really make a big difference in your marriage. So, so Angie, what tip do you have for us today? Hmm, what would be a good tip? You know, when it comes to direct communication, I would say start with something small. And what I mean by that is it can be very scary to ask for what we want because we're afraid of that confrontation. We're afraid our needs are gonna be rejected our requests are going to be rejected. And so if we start with something small in a benign situation that, you know, it's really harmless, we can start to ask for small needs to be met. Maybe we ask uh, for, I want to go here for dinner, you know, or I'd like to watch this TV show. You know, maybe you're used to letting them, their, your partner dictate what goes on the te television, right? Maybe you start saying, well, I would really like to watch Outlander <laughs> on Netflix. Well, it's one of my favorite. Um, and so start with something small and believe me, your confidence will gain momentum. And then you'll start to be able to take those small requests and that confidence and bring it to bigger, more serious situations of where you really need honest communication. And ladies, this week is Valentine's Day. What better time could there be? For you to learn how to speak up for what you need and what you want you know give that gift to yourself and to your partner because it will please both of you perfect perfect i think that's wonderful advice and and that's we're all about this this transformation this healing this really stepping into who you are and not being ashamed you know because you have needs and wants because you're human and we all do and if your spouse really cares about you, they would want your needs and wants to be met as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please comment down below your thoughts on people pleasing and with your spouse and what you notice and maybe what you want to do differently. Happy things. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. We are wishing you a very romantic and fun week. And uh, this has been Morgan and Angie with the shift from people pleasing to empowered connection. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.